Uh, just just an injury update, and you might have to help me with this. Uh, Luke Ryan will be back with us this week. So excited to have Luke back. Um, other than that, I think we're a pretty healthy team. Deshaun Singleton's will still be out. Um, um, but uh, we're excited to have Luke back. Obviously, he'll be a big big uh, um, boom for our, uh, for our defense. So big week for us, huge week for us, playing an excellent Northwestern team, 3-3. Three and three, um, Unbelievable comeback win over Minnesota. Down, I think it was 31-10. Um, um, Coach uh, Coach Braun's doing a fantastic job, so it'll be a heck of a ball game. Excited, excited to have a chance to play them. Excited for this week. Excited to see our players after the bye week. So I'm sure you guys have lots of questions. How much football did you get to watch this weekend? And when you look at the Big Ten West, particularly, I mean, what kind of opportunity is out there for you guys to, to put your name in this thing for the next few weeks? Yeah, I'm not worried about the big picture. I think that's the problem uh, with Nebraska football. I think that's why we've gone one and five down the stretch most years. Um, looking at things outside of just going one and zero this week, um, evaluating the offensive, defensive coaches, evaluating the offense versus the de- all the, all this this stuff outside the program. Um, I'm, I'm going to do my best to keep it from f- infiltrating the program. Um, we've got to get we've got to get a way to get one and zero this week. We've got to try to improve this week. Um, it's going to be a real challenge. Um, so, to me. Um, you know, I had a chance to watch the teams we play. I was really, really happy to see Illinois play well. Um, you know, because that obviously anytime we play someone, we beat them, and then we see them play well, it makes us feel good about who they are. I saw Northern Illinois go to get a huge win over a five and one Ohio U team. So, you know, I feel good about where our team is. Um, but our team has got to eliminate the looking past just what's important this week. When we got embarrassed in Michigan, we didn't think about anything else other than Friday night. And we were locked in. And we're going to find out about myself as a head coach and our coaches and our players and our staff. Um, you know, can we, can we have that same focus this week? We better. Um, we better. There's been, a few, there's been a few times you've mentioned kind of the big picture and, and, you know, not looking ahead and all that. I mean, has that surprised you how much Husker fans kind of look at the big picture and always kind of taking stock of their team and all? Well, I love Husker fans. Let me say that. Okay. I'm talking about the team. You know, like, like we, the only reason why – we have the opportunities we have is because there's so much care about the program. Um, I just have to make sure our players don't act like fans. They act like the guys that are going to go out and play. And so if you're not careful, you know, like, like then all these things start to infiltrate the team. And so um, I go back and I just look at history. Okay. You look at the, the team, look, look at Nebraska football over the last eight to 10 years in the second half of the season. It's abysmal. Okay. And it's not a knock on anyone. I respect the heck out of those. Those are good coaches. But, like, we're not – we can't be the type of team that, oh, we lose, we, we're, we lost to Colorado, we're embarrassed, we come back, we win. We play okay, not very great against La Tech, right? We, then, then we go out, we get embarrassed against Michigan. Now we're embarrassed. Now we can play great against Illinois. We just can't be that team. I'm not, I don't want to coach that team, and our players don't want to be a part of that team. So that's what it is. And at the same time, there's this thing out there that I can hear, right, about, like, you know, is this coach doing – they're all doing a good job. This program's not in good shape. <laughs> They're all doing a great job, I think. And so I'm in charge of this football program. Like, Sat would love to go no huddle and score 50 points. Tony would love to blitz every play. I run the program. And so we're playing as a team. So all that other stuff, it's, it's, it's why we haven't been to a bowl game. We're the only Power 5 team that hasn't been to a bowl game in a long time. So if I start talking about bowl games, I'm part of the problem. So the fans are supposed to do this. My daughters, Dad, if we go to a bowl game, can I have Taylor Swift? They're, my daughters are fans. <laughs> Right? They're, they're supposed to do that. I just got to get the team to be really locked in to like today, tomorrow. Because think about Coach Braun, the job that he's done. He comes, it comes from North Dakota State, takes this job at Northwestern. He's the DC. Coach Fitzgerald, great friend of mine, a man I respect, gets let go. He steps in as the interim head coach. He's on a one year deal. And he's got this team battling, man. They're fighting for their lives. What are we doing? You know, what, what are we going to be like? We'll find out on Saturday. So. That's the message I put out there usually on Mondays when I feel this because I want our players to have that mentality, but they will. I want our staff, and I hope our fans come to this game as locked in and as thinking this game is as important as anything else because I respect the team we're playing and I respect the coaching staff. To be in the situation they're in, to be down 21 points and to fight back, man, that's, that says a lot about the character. We better have the same character. So. I, I talk to the players a lot. I talk to the players a lot. And I've talked to them a lot in the off season. Um, I'll meet with a bunch of like, – during the week, the, one, the, the thing that I've done I think better than I normally have is 
after the first two weeks, I spend a lot of time one on one with players. Um, and so they kind of they've kind of given me a lot of things. Right. Um, but I can also just kind of feel it in my daily conversations with like the people in our building. Right. People love to send me like memes from Twitter, like, you know, like, hey, look, coach, there's a picture of you. Um, it's just not healthy for the it's not healthy for the team. This is a team that has to learn how to be the same team every week, right? Doesn't that what you guys all want? You guys want to come watch us play badly on Saturday? Like, we want to be the same team every week. And so that's a level of, you know, that's, that's hard to do. Either you're so talented, you don't have to do that. There's some teams that are so talented, they, they have to get up for three or four games. We have to get up for every game. We had to battle to beat Northern Illinois. We had to battle to beat La Tech. We're not in that place yet. We, we got to fight, scratch, and claw. So the players have kind of addressed a lot of these things with me. I'm not worried about the players. Um, as much as I'm worried about like our staff and coaches and all them, like we, we have to lead the way. I have to lead the way. I have to wake up this week feeling that same. Now I woke up after that Michigan game, Mitch. I felt sick to my stomach that whole week. I woke up after the Colorado game. I felt like someone was standing on my chest. You know, I don't want to walk around this week happy. <laughs> I better feel, have the same urge to go one and zero this week. Um, but this is not about hey Northwestern. This is just about the program in general. I'm trying to do a good job of addressing it to people because I went to Takema this summer and I spoke. And there was a 97-year-old woman that waited in line to meet me. And so when I think about Husker fans, I think about her. And I don't, I don't want her like, she waited in line to meet me. That's embarrassing to me. And I, don't, I just want us to be that type of a team that like, you, when you come to see us play, you know what you're going to get. And so that's the challenge for us these last six games, not to worry about what comes after them, but just to worry about how we do them. Coach, this rivalry between Northwest, I guess right, matchup between Northwestern and Nebraska, it's been a lot of close games in recent years. I mean, have you looked back at some of those close games? In the game? Yeah, I watched the, well, I mean, I watched the 2021 game and I watched last year's game um, a lot. I watched both those games a lot, right? Um, I thought what uh, Coach Frost and the offensive staff did two years ago was phenomenal. But Martinez was amazing. I mean, a lot of great things happened to play great defense. Um, obviously, last year was a hard-fought battle back and forth. But, you know, they have a new defensive coordinator, right? There's just not a lot of things that translate, so it's all, it's all kind of new. So um, those are more like off-season studies for me. You know, I get in the game week, I usually try to go back and watch personnel. You know, Coach Vokalek is there who was here, so obviously he'll know our personnel. So I try to go back and watch their players versus our guys a little bit. But for the most part, now I have, you know, I have six games on them versus really good competition, two top 25 teams that they've played. Uh, they're just a lot like us. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know we're we're working hard to get Jeff to be the best that he can be. We're working hard to get Heinrich and Chubb to be the best that they can be. Um, you know, we'll play with Heinrich. You know, for now, um, Jeff just ready to go on a moment's notice. Uh, you know, we sometimes we mix him in with the ones a lot in practice. I would have no problem ever having a package to play two. I'm not saying we would do that, but I have no problem with the way he works. But to me, you know, Heinrich's played well. Um, Heinrich's got, done, done some good things, and so um, you know he'll he'll be the starter. Um, Getting plays that help him to, to be the best he can be. Yeah, I think we were able to go back and really identify um, what he does well. You know, because when you build something, you usually build it around who you anticipate the starter to be. And so, hey, what are the things that not only is he comfortable with when you watch the tape, hey, he's doing this pretty well. And then what are some of the plays that we've kind of fell into? Like, hey, these are good plays for us. What are the plays that come off that? And at the same time, having to simplify a great deal with a bunch of freshman receivers now going to be playing. So. It's kind of this unique, you know, hey, we, we have, you know, we're down to, you know, we're down to the third and fourth string tailback to start the year at least, right? We're down to some young wideouts and we're also, you know, new quarterback. Hey, what do they all do well? And uh, we have enough good players to win with, you know, so just trying to find out what they do well. But I think Heinrich had a really good week last week. You know, he was still a little beat up from that game. That was a hard fought game. You know, he, he went out there and battled each day uh, to practice last week. So did Jeff. So I think we have a good feel as a team, right? Like, hey, what, what do those guys do well? Yeah, Emmett, Emmett can play for us. I think Emmett's a good player. Emmett, uh, you know, we ran a counter with him, and he, he knifed up the field and got six or eight yards. I mean, I think he shows quickness and toughness and burst. Excellent protection, can catch the football. We just, uh, you know, we just have to protect the football, um, and he has to protect the football. Um, obviously, his was on an exchange. It wasn't a pure fumble. Um, so, you know, kind of going back to what Sam just talked about, right, like, you know, hey, Heinrich wasn't taking a lot of reps with Emmett for a couple weeks, right, now just getting them kind of synced up together. 
um, on some of those plays. But Emmett can really help us. I don't. I would. I would never think about that. When it comes to like the, just just so you guys know me, because like, you're here. What I'm like, we were playing Illinois, and we, they, I was like, hey, they're not going to move the ball against us today. I don't care if I don't care if we run the ball every play and punt and like that's just what you get when you when coaching. You know, it's 25 mile an hour wins. Last thing that can be is a bad ball, right? Like you know, we're going to play that way. So I want to score one more than the other team. But that's. Uh, that might be old school and kind of boring nowadays, but it, it it'll it'll result in good things in the long run. Do you hear the narrative that you, you hear it a lot? That the you hear Big Ten West down is bad. How do you how do you react to that? Do you have any reaction? I have none. Yeah, I mean this is my first time going through it, and then Big Ten West will be gone next year anyway. So. Um, I, I literally I, I was a young coach because you know I don't want you guys to think I'm always just like coach speak. I was a young coach head coach at Temple, and I sat down at a table at the, at the retreat with you know, all the American conference coaches were there. George O'Leary, who I looked a lot, really looked up to, was there, and UCF was rolling at the time, and he was going to become the AD, and I was like, yeah, coach, we play. I forget what year it was. I was like, man, we play Penn State, but then we got Cincinnati, and he, and he was like, Maddie, Maddie. And he's like, just play them one at a time. And, and you hear that? But the teams I thought were going to be really good that year actually were pretty down, and the teams I thought were going to be down that year were really pretty good, and so... Um, I think we face good teams each week. <laughs> I think it's a battle each week. You know, I just think there's always a narrative out there. Like people watch the Iowa Wisconsin game and say it's a bad football game or it's an ugly football game. I think it's a beautiful defensive football game. And um, you know, I see a lot of I see a lot of teams that scored a lot of points early in the season in, in games this weekend, not quite scores quite as many points as the year gets on and people catch up and it gets a little colder. So, you know, I was on its way to having another great year. Um, and people are making a big deal about how many points they score. They're scoring one more than their opponent most games. So I think the big, you know, I don't know anything about the Big Ten West other than I'm pay- facing each one each, each year. And after the year, I'll probably have a better feel for, you know, kind of who everyone is. And then we'll shuffle it up and we'll be going to the West Coast. And <laughs> I'll do my best to figure that out. Man, what kind of lift does Luke give you, not just performance-wise, you maybe give me a veteran voice out there? No, he, well, Luke is one of the voices. Um, even before last game, I texted him, you know, on the day of the game, like, hey, bro, I wish you were with us, man. I've Feel, you know, I feel so awful about what happened to him. You know, just you know, got got a MRSA in his arm. You know, and just a you know, got, got an infection. And um, you know, he was like, "Hey, I already sent a message to the guys. They're ready, coach." You know, um, he, he's a voice that the guys listen to. And so when he speaks, I think it goes a long way. And um, you know, as a player, he's really going to help us. You know, I mean, um, he's excellent off the ball. And you know, this is a team Northwestern that you know can can spin it. And they can also run it, and they have athletic quarterbacks. So we'll need Luke's athleticism out there. How much do all three of the freshman receivers factor in this week? Now that you've had some more time, and you know your situation a little better. Yeah, Malachi's a starter. He'll start. You know, the great thing about Malachi is he didn't have much time to think about it. Like, you know, unfortunately, if Marcus went down, and Malachi had to run out there and play, and so he, and he played well. I mean, he's got he's got things that he does differently that we have to adjust. You know, he's his the things that he loves to do. Like we have to factor some of that in. Uh, Jalen Moy is going to play a ton. Uh, Jaden Doss is still kind of in the middle. Um, you know, when you're a freshman receiver and you don't practice for whatever it was, five, six, seven weeks, that's difficult. Um, the other guys practice. But Jalen's ready to go. Malachi is ready to go. And what I saw from them last week, Sean, was I saw them like they showed up last week. They knew like, okay, it's time to play. I saw Quentin Ives. He showed up. He said, hey, it's time to play. Um, and Jaden showed up too. I just, you know, I'm not sure exactly where Jaden will fall on this whole thing. But um, – the great thing about the last game is, you know, Alex. I think Alex Bullock has figured out that he's he's a really good player. You know, fourth and three, he makes an unbelievable catch. He makes a great catch on the slant. Um, you know, he's got long speed. You know, and then Ty Han made a big play for us. So I think the, you know Heinrich's developing a a real uh, rapport with those guys as well. When you're down some skilled players and you have inexperience at quarterback, how much more do you want to lean on your offensive line? How did you feel like that group played over the first six games? Um, yeah, I think our offensive line has gotten better and better and better. Um, I think they are one of the groups that I think they – I'm going to speak for them. I, I think they're one of the groups that's really been scarred by they, – they're scarred still by the things that are said about them out there, and they hear it they, – they probably were hearing it too much and not having a lot of fun playing. Um, and I think that they, in the last two weeks, have really kind of gotten past that a little bit. I think they – you know, I just – you know, I just don't – when you run the ball for 200 yards a game, no matter how you get it, like, you don't do that if guys aren't playing well. If tight ends aren't blocking, if guys aren't running – 
Um, I think the biggest thing that I've seen improvement in is our pass protection. You know, we're getting better and better and better in pass pro. Um, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not here to throw the ball 45 times a game. So, um, but, you know, we're, we're getting better in those regards. But I like our offensive line. I like, you know, the amount of things that they see, the amount of things that people throw at us because we don't throw it a ton. You know, they, the, the amount they blitz us, um, they, they, they are unsung heroes to me. One thing that's changed in college football the last five years is the, uh, the presence of pro football focus scores. And they haven't always scored well in that area, the offensive linemen. How much have you had to tell them is, hey, push that out, not worry about it, don't listen to the noise about what your grades are on yeah, I just say this: if you go back and if you go back and listen to anything I said when I was in the NFL, I talked about that being the number one thing that affects players of the National Football League is those grades because people listen to them, right? And I would just say that if I went and graded our O line and Donnie graded our O line and Sat graded our O line, we would all come out sometimes with different scores. <laughs> so I'm really I'm not going to listen to other people, um, and that's I mean that with the greatest deal of respect, you know. Um, so I don't look at the grades of other teams. I don't say like, oh, well, this guy, let's go after this guy. He's a 64. So um, it's just one more cottage industry built up around the sport. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they've done a good job. And we use PFF for like video and stuff. Like we use it, like it's amazing what they do in terms of like, hey, show me every pass thrown to the left quadrant on third and seven. I can, I mean, I'm like a geek on that stuff. But in terms of the scores, you know, the, 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 the qualitative data, I'm not going to pay attention to that. I, again, I mean, don't we just want our players to go out there and fight to play? Like, I, you know, I, I struggle with, you can tell, I'm always going to defend my players and my coaches. I struggle with the fact that, like, these players are here to get Nebraska football over the hump because it hasn't been over the hump, and these coaches are here. Like, when I go in for my heart exam and my doctor tells me I have uh, uh, calcium, <laughs> I, don't yell at the, I don't yell at the heart doctor. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I don't yell at the guy trying to fix the problem. So why would anyone say anything bad about the kids that are out there playing to try to get us back to a bowl game? Why would anyone say anything about the coaches that are trying? Like that's crazy to me. So I see the impact it has on young people. It's 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 devastating to them. It really is. Like, most of my job is about hey guys, ignore the noise, ignore it, ignore what people are saying about you. And that, you know, I'm having to do that a little bit in recruiting sometimes too. Like coach, why would we? Well, I don't know. Do the recruits need to hear everyone talk about? That we're not good at this and not good at that. I don't know. So, it's it's the job. It's challenging. I, I relish this. I'm not complaining about it. You know, everybody has a job to do. Fans have, but I'm proud of our players. And they, I say this so that they hear it. Their parents hear it. And a PFF score does not determine who they are. You know, um, Ethan Piper's out there playing with a broken hand. Right? He's pass protecting number four from Illinois, who's going to be a first round draft pick with a broken hand. And we won the game. I'd hug the guy, not not grade him. Well, you got a chance there. Because it, yeah, because it's one thing to say like, hey, you're supposed to down block, and he did. And he gets a minus for that, right? But like, do you know how hard it's hard to move? <laughs> it's hard to move people in football, right? Like, they get they get on they're, like, they're on scholarship too. So, um, you know, like it's it's all just subjective. You know what I'm saying? It's just it it's a it's it's, it's a moving target. You know, um, you know, it's just subjective. So if I can't if I if I don't trust myself enough to do it. All the time, like I know what I kind of see, and I'm like, hey, Donnie, we want this here. Hey, hey, Sat, we want this here. Hey, Tony, if I can't do it, then I'm certainly not going to listen to anybody else. You know, what I mean, I live this. I don't do anything else but this, and occasionally, occasionally, a woman, a girls' volleyball game with my daughters. Like, this is all I do. So, it's just really subjective. And again, it, it makes for great theater. I just want our players. I want our players walking in this building thinking about going 1-0 and and worrying about what their teammates think and what their they think. At the same time, I want us to go out there and have an unbelievable crowd on Saturday that's proud of the way we play. Um, I just, you know, they just can't live your life on Twitter. Like you said, you said you've been locked in here pretty, pretty good for three months at least. Last, late last week, you did get to go out and, you know, see some schools, yeah. see some kids. What was that experience like for you to get back out among people? Oh, I mean, people are unbelievable to us, you know. I mean, people people are, I mean, everywhere I go, people are, hey, people seem to be grateful for, like, hey, that, you know, we're working hard to, you know, get the program back on track, right, and get us moving in the right direction. So, like, you feel that everywhere. You know, we went went to a game in Omaha, went, to, went up to Western Iowa, then I went out to Ainsworth, and, uh, I mean, I went out to Ainsworth with a windbreaker. It was 34 degrees. So I went to uh, uh, the Western store there. Um, 
And uh, the gentleman owns a store. Obviously, Husker fan comes to the games every week. Help help me get fitted for a nice parka and hat, and went to the game. And I mean, you know, I saw Ainsworth play Boyd County, and people are you know, people are everywhere. And I took you know, little kids are coming up. They're fired up, you know. So um, I'm glad we won the Illinois game before I went out on the road because a lot of people were pretty, pretty fired up about that game. But even if we hadn't, you know, I, I just I, I, it always goes back to me talking about going to Tacoma, going to Ainsworth, going to the places I've been. Like how much people care and how much we want to do a good job for them. But yeah, there was a, there was a really, really unbelievably positive vibe out there. And along those lines, so you're getting to the time of the year where your seniors that you recruited are putting, putting stuff on film. You know, other schools might get interested in them. Bring them in for visits. Um, not as it relates to anybody specific who you're recruiting or who's committed to you, but how, how do you approach that with kids that are, that are committed to you they want to engage with another school, take another visit, have conversations? Yeah, sorry. Um, first of all, we're not, I, never, I have this thing, you never get mad because you have to recruit somebody, right? So we're like, you know, I, you know, I didn't just take this job. I'm sure you guys have had other opportunities. You've looked at other jobs before. So I only want people to come here if they really want to be here because I know what we're going to demand of them, but I also know what we're going to pour into them. And so I want people to come here eyes wide open. So. Um, you, you know, you, you have to understand that sometimes you fall in like two tiers. There's guys that like, hey, we'll wait till signing day four. And you know what I mean? Like, hey, we, we're, we're going to battle for you till the very end. And then as numbers crunches happen and things like that, there's some guys that like, hey, if you want to look around and just move on, we're going to, you know, so. But when it comes to players that like, you know, we know can really help us, they, they've, got, they've got to look, they've got to do, they've got to do their due diligence because when they come here, I want them locked in here. I want them here for the long haul. And I want them here for the right reasons, but we're not, a, I'm not, we're, we're not second to anybody and we're not backing down from anybody in recruiting. Um, recruiting is a lot different now, right? There's different things tied to it sometimes, but it, when it comes down to just where a player wants to go, I have no problem. When players have called me and said, Hey coach, I'm going to go visit this game or go visit this school. I said, have a great time. <laughs> have a good time. You know, um, if they're thinking about, you know, sometimes it goes a little further than that, then I have to make decisions. So the thing that's going to be hard for us is, not hard, but a lot of our seniors, a lot of our guys that have COVID years are having really, really good experiences. Ramir Johnson the other day, you know, if we can, he's going to come back for his sixth year. Like a guy that when I got here, they weren't, people weren't sure if he'd even stick around for this year. He wants to come back for his sixth year. So we treat players really well. Um, we care greatly about them, and we also push them. And so a lot of guys aren't going to want to leave the program. Like Marcus, you know, Washington said, Coach, is there any way I can get an extra year? I said, man, you were dying to get out of here, and now you don't want to leave, you know. I love Marcus Washington. So... Um, we'll have to do some, we'll have to figure some things out roster wise, you know, as we move forward. Um, cause guys aren't, you know, some guys will want to move on. Some guys will want to stay. And I think that's a really good thing, but yeah, we're not afraid to recruit. We're talking about Sorry. implementing, you know, going one and all every single week. How have you seen that grow within your, within your team since the beginning of the season? Um, I heard them say it, right? I heard them say it. Um, I see the way that they work. You know, we work in a way that sometimes I can see them be like, you know, hey, coach, how do we, you know, how do we sustain this early on? And now I can see them start to be like, we, we can sustain this. Um, and I will try to do a good job as the year goes on. I'll cut back. I'm not foolish, right? But um, I see them just kind of understanding like, hey, it's about us. It's not about the opposing team, right? It's about us and the way we play. We, we expect that the other team that we face is going to play well. We know Northwestern is going to play well. We know Northwestern after a bye week is going to have things for us we haven't seen on offense, defense, and special teams. So we've, we've got to be prepared for everything. So I just think their work ethic and the amount of time they spend in here, their willingness to move. Like when Chief Borders moves from Jack to D-line out of blind faith, when I say, hey, I think this would be a good move for you. Like, hey, Jamari, move. when guys start doing those things, because it just shows faith in the process. And, um, but I think just the way they practice and the way they, their attention to detail. I'm excited to see them get in here tonight and see what they're like tonight. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that they're very, very locked in, which I expect that they will be. Yeah, so the issue in the Michigan game was not effort to me, to me. The issue, issue in, in the Michigan game was kind of what I, when I talk about it here, what I'm battling in the program, I'm not afraid to say it out loud, is like when things go well for us early, I know we're going to play well. When things don't go well for us early, I'm kind of anxious to see how we respond. They, you know, they make those TV shows and they, they send it to me to see if it's okay. They have made one from Illinois. I haven't wanted to put it out yet and I don't know if they will or won't. But in that pregame speech, it's kind of funny. I said to them, I said, hey, 
I, I know you'll fight if we're up 14 nothing. but how are you going to fight if, the, if, it's 14, if we're down 14 nothing? How are you going to fight if the ball's on the one-yard line? Not knowing that eight minutes later the ball would be on the one-yard line. That play to me was a pivotal, pivotal, pivotal turning point in this team's growth and development. That they were just in the moment. Instead of feeling sad that they just drove the ball down, they went out there and they just played. And so um, it wasn't effort as much as it was just like, hey, like, what's next? Like, play the next play. Just keep playing. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, don't worry about what happens at the end of the year. Don't worry about what people are saying about you. Don't worry about the score. Just play football. You're a Cornhusker. Play football. And that's easier said than done, though. This is the process. But once we figure this out, we're going to be a good team. And we're going to be a good team for a while because – it's not built on you – know, some teams that everybody talked a lot about. I watch a lot of football. I will say this about the teams. Some teams that everybody talked a lot about, I see them on the sideline. They don't – you know, I see them in the, in the middle of some adversity. They, maybe they didn't have early adversity. I saw a lot of teams in college football crack a little bit, you know, like on Saturday, right? Like just different teams, right? How do you respond to adversity? We just got our, a lot of our adversity early in the year. We responded to it. What I want to see is us now for six games embrace adversity. Like Northwestern takes the opening kickoff back this week. How are we going to respond, Right. Or we have success early. How are we going to respond? I, so that's the next step. It was fun just to put the ball down. I realized with this team I have to do that more often. Uh, I forget these guys. Like, these guys were like – some of them didn't play their senior year. COVID, all those – like, they just got to play football a little bit. And, like, Heinrich just needs to play football, right? Everything can't be a seven-on-seven -seven drill. They just got to play. And the more they play, the more I see their personalities come out. So that's kind of me adapting to this team, right? I – like – we were chanting with the crowd on Saturday. Like the crowd was chanting, go Big Red, and our guys on defense were throwing the ball. I hate that. I hate that because I'm like, watch the game. But you know what? I told the team, if you're going to play well, if that gets you going, if the crowd gets you going, I'll adapt. I'll be a little more new school. So I'm adapting with this team and learning their rhythms because they work hard. And if you work hard for me, I'll, 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 I'll try to be a little bit cooler. How do you spend last week talking about the growth opportunities between the bowl games and the bye weeks and all the benefits there? What did you see in terms of growth from your guys? I know they had the weekend off, but did you see some, some market growth this week? Yeah, we, 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 some young players that are redshirted, we, we were able to get them way more reps. Some guys, we moved positions. Hey, like, you know, like, hey, I know you're a D lineman. I'm going to play a guard for three days. And, you know, after the initial shock wears off, you know, but I think hopefully they all understand it's because we think they're good players and want to get them on the field. So we were able to move some guys around. We were able to do some of the things we talked about, try some things that, for the guys that are playing, and then we were able to get some young guys in there. Um, with the goal of, you know, as we come down the stretch here, we're worried about this week, but we have some guys coming, you know, maybe we get Buford back for a couple, maybe we get Deshaun back. So getting DeAndre Barnes and Ramirez Stewart, getting them ready to play so that as we have injuries, we have another crop of guys ready to go. So um, that was a really pivotal week for us. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, we have to. Um, we, we just have to. Uh, I think, um, I think, uh, I think that's been that was a focus for us last week because Billy's a dynamic player, and um, you know he, we have to get him involved more. Just you know when it's when it's third down they can kind of sometimes double him and bracket him and do different things, but we have to get him the ball more in normal downs. We have to continue to get Thomas the ball more. We have to continue to get Fleeks involved. There's a lot of we have enough players to win with. You know, um, it's just sometimes when you kind of go through what you go through, you're trying to just get to you know hey go one row this week. Go, now you get to the bye week, you sit back, you say hey, who do we need to get involved? And so I think. Um, I think those guys have done a good job of that. I think if I would leave them alone, you know, they would probably have gotten the ball more. So, you know, I'm, 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 again, these first six weeks, I wanted to build a run game that, you know, we could run the ball with. I wanted to build a run defense based off of last year being 108th to now, I think, the second half of the season. We have to continue to do those two things. But we've got to get better at third down defense. We've got to get better at third down offense. We have to throw the ball better. We have to play better pass defense. So um, those were all things we examined over the bye. But Billy's a big piece of that. I'm not saying you were sitting on Sad a little bit, but were you sitting on Sad a little bit offensively in terms of what he was, what he was able to kind of call or the tempo with which he was able to move in the first six games? Yeah, we're not going to play with tempo. Like, it's just not us yet. Like, in the, at, some point, at some point, we will go, you know, as we continue to develop, and maybe it'll be this week. But, like, right now, like, like we, you know, after you have eight turnovers in the first two games, you're going to say we have a good defense, you're going to say, hey, let's not beat ourselves. We won three of our last four. I know, that, like I know, you know, uh, well, but uh, we won three of our last four. So, um, yeah, do I, I sit on everybody? That's what I'm saying. Like, like that's what I'm complain about me. Like, don't complain about the coaches. Like, do you think Ed wants to run a Ed wants to run a fake punt every week? He wants to block every punt, right? I have to say, Ed, what are we doing? Ed, Ed, no, no, you know, like, Ed wants to do that. Sat wants to throw the ball down the field every play. Garrett wants to drop back and throw it 50 times. Tony, if you don't, Tony's going to go zero blitz every play. My job is to manage the team. 
And um, again, I let my coaches coach. I don't want to sound like I'm sitting here going through every call, but I set the tone for what we do. When we have a lead, we're going to run the football and choke the game out. If that's just what we're going to do. And you know what will happen when we get good? And maybe we're good now, maybe not. I'm not saying when we figure this whole thing out, we're going to have a bunch of games where we have a lead in the fourth quarter and we run for 100 yards and everyone's going to leave happy. It won't be, you know, I won't be up for the Broyles Award. No one's going to call me a guru or, you know, Sat might not be up for the Broyles Award, but, you know, we'll, we'll win games. We just want to win. Was the D lineman uh, that moved from? I don't want to say that. Yeah, he might get upset. Yeah, it's one of the freshmen, but um, he was just, he literally just came to my office to say, what am I doing today? So, um, you know, I just, for me, I'm always, I don't like to uh, suppose things. So I always say, hey, can you, like A.J. Ronald, hey, can you give me some plays over here so I can just see it? The Jeremiah Charles, wide out, wide out, wide out, wide out. And then we're like, hey, can you just give us some reps at corner too? And now all of a sudden watch him at corner. We think he's, we think he's going to be a dynamic corner. So Tommy Hill, like, you, you know how much Sat and Garrett were upset when Tommy Hill went to full-time corner? Like, you talk about, hey, offense or defense. Like, I have to make those decisions. Tommy's... Tommy moved to full-time wideout and was just going to play third down corner for us. And then Deshaun went down and Tommy was gone in a flash. So we always go defense first with the personnel. But I like to just see guys at different positions and then figure out, hey, when we get to bowl practice, you know, where am I going to put this guy? And then in bowl practice you get it and then you kind of know going into the spring. And I think, it, you know, that helps guys because they, they know that they have a future in the program. Thanks for putting up with that long rambling.